Oh, come on. Look at that. That is superb. Oh, come on. Just look at that. That is phenomenal. Hi everyone, welcome to Backyard Chef. I'm Rick. Today we are making ham. We're going to make ham two different ways, or we're going to cook ham two different ways, but we're going to make it the same way. We're going to make it so we can boil some ham and we can roast some ham. Now, it starts off with a brine. Now, I already have a ham on the channel. Um, if somebody wants to go look at the old video, but we're going to show you how to do it a quick, easy way. It's the same way as we did before. But, you know, this is just up to date video, really. That was made a couple of years ago. Um, I am going to syringe it. We have a injector and we are going to inject our pork. Okay. Now it's a quick way to brine it. It's very, very quick. Um, you brine it in a wet brine. You inject it with 10% of the weight of the meat. So we're going to have to do a little bit of mass and work it out. We weigh all the pork and then we work out 10% of that weight of that piece of pork and we inject the brine into that pork. Let's show you how to do it. It all starts with weighing some meat or doing the brine. We're going to weigh the meat and then we'll do the brine. So we'll weigh the meat, write it all down, work it all out whilst the brine is bubbling away. Let's show you how to do it right now. Okay, I've got a couple of pork loin here. A couple of nice pieces of pork loin. So that's the first one. Let's have that on there. And that weighs 1,031. So that is over a kilo right there. That's one. On we go. Got a smaller piece, I reckon. Oh, it's not, it's bigger. 1036. I'll put that on there. And this one is pork hip. And that weighs 980. So we've got a decent amount of pork there, look. Now we have to work out the 10% of all those figures. Now that is for injecting the brine into the meat. That's all the 10% is for. Okay, it's as easy as that. Okay, let's crack on and make the brine. The brine has to cool down completely before we can inject the meat. So we're just going there with four litres of water. Our pink cure. Our salt. Our sugar. Now I'm using brown sugar, but you can use white sugar. It doesn't matter. And then we've got all our spices on there. In we go. little stir up and then what we need to do is get this on to boil we're going to boil this till all the sugars and everything dissolve in there and that will be our brine so we'll boil it up and then we've got to let it go cold Okay, so when you've had it boiling away there for about 20 minutes, it's time to turn it off. So just turn it off and we're going to let that go cool. Let it go cool and we can use it as our brine. Okay, so we've got our brine cooled down there. Our first bit of meat is that pork hip. It weighs 980 grams. 10% of that is 98 grams. So we want 98 grams of our brine in there. But not the peppercorns. Oh, 
a hundred grams of brine there okay and that brine a hundred grams has to be injected into there so we need to suck it up into there now these meat injectors they're absolutely fantastic you can buy them on Amazon or anywhere like that it's entirely up to you I'll leave a link in the description have a look so all you do we want all that into that meat so we have to draw that up into there now you don't pull all the way to the end because we're going to have to change the nozzle this nozzle has holes in it it has holes all the way down it on either side and that's where it's going to inject the fluid out now all that brine has to go in here so let's turn that around so you can see now to brine it up all you've got to do is get your injector into the meat as many places as possible so just squirt some brine in and then come into another area all we're trying to do is put some of that brine all in that meat so it actually cures from the inside so it's fairly easy we're gonna to have to change the nozzle again now don't worry about it if you get brine in there we can tip it back in there and we can draw it back out again we're not worried about that we need to get as much of that in there as possible I'm just gonna flip that over we're just gonna come in this end here and in there and if you see it puff up when you inject your brine that's simply because you're pumping fluid into it okay that'll do and then what we're going to do we're going to put that in a ziplock bag and then we do the other two the pork loin and then we'll chip the brine in around it so it's quite plumped up at the moment so try not to squeeze it really hard that is one pork ready so the weight of these again we need to be putting our brine in there our brine this weighs 1031 grams so 10% of that is 103 grams so we want 103 grams of our brine so we can inject in there draw it up change out your needle again And then all we do is we inject our meat in as many places as we can in another bag okay so there's our meat now what we need to do is get that brine in there we're going to divide the brine into those three bags it's as easy as that really so all we do is we want to be ladling our brine around our meat so we'll do a couple in each and then we'll try and get some uh, of our spices in around it
What you don't have to do, you don't, I hope it doesn't fall over, what you don't have to do, you don't have to worry about having it fully submerged. You know, get enough in there because we're going to turn it over for the next 48 hours. We're going to turn it over a couple of times. So I'm just going to come into the bottom of there and see if I can get some of our spices out. Bob a few spices in each one. Now, of course, this is completely optional. You don't have to go down this line. And I'm not going to use a star anise or anything like that. There's enough in the, in the water, but I'm going to just put some of those coriander and peppercorns in there. And a little bit of that chilli. Now, and the only reason I'm not using the star anise and the cinnamon stick is I do not want to puncture the bag. That's got it, I reckon. So let's give this a bit of a sealing. See if we can bring it up around that pork. Eject some of that air out. We're going to be able to close this thing. Okay, and we are going to double bag. That is a certainty. There's absolutely no way we want this leaking in the fridge. There you go, that's one done. Crack on with the rest. Okay, there's our three hams there, or three lots of pork there, ready to be turned into ham. And what we're going to do, we are going to turn those over in a, probably about four hours or so, turn it over. It doesn't, the time doesn't matter, you know. It's curing inside, curing outside. You can just turn it once if you so wish. But for the amount of times that I actually go in the fridge, I will actually just turn them over. So every four hours or five hours, I'll turn it over. Obviously, it doesn't matter when you go to sleep. Um, and then it'll be fully cured. And that is it. It's as easy as that to prep up your ham to make ham. So that now goes in the fridge. So before we go, I just want to say about these, you know, I use these meat injectors every single month for, for many, many things. They're, they're simple to use, they're easy to clean out and you get lots of little O-rings and spares and all the rest of it and a box of goodies and all different types of needles, small ones, big ones, cleaning brushes, everything like that. They're worth getting. Now, there is a link on the channel, have a look at it. It don't matter if you don't get it from there. Have a look on the, on the channel, see what you think. If you want a meat injector and you want to make your own hams, you're going to have to buy one. If not, you're wet brining this for days and days and days and it ain't going to cure inside. So there you go. This is a quick way. Let's get this in the fridge. Okay, so that's our meat in the fridge. It's going to be in there for 48 hours. 48 hours, we're going to cook it. That's how quick it is by injecting the brine inside the ham. So in 48 hours, we'll take it out, we cook it. Hi everyone, welcome back. Okay, 48 hours. This is our hams out of the fridge. Now what we have to do, we have to take the ham out of the bags and we have to give it a rinse. Now we're going to rinse it off because we want the salt off there. Now I've got a bowl here, look, just to show you here. And I'm going to rinse it under the tap. So let's get in here and take our, our ham. So that is our cured pork loin. Let's just put that in there. So you can see it's an easy process actually. You know, and what I've done, I've just rotated it. 
every every five hours or so when I've gone in there I've turned it over in the fridge that's all now that was our piece of pork that wasn't a pork loin this is the other pork loin now what I do find I do find that pork loins are fantastic for hamming simply because it's already got a good shape you know and then when it comes down to to actually slice in it it's already a nice firm shape and you get a nice slice of ham right okay there's our beautiful cured ham in there it's not cooked yet obviously we're going to rinse it under the tap and then we're going to pat it dry with kitchen towel Pat it dry the best you can. Now another tip is I don't think the salt I don't think the salt content is very high end on this at all for what we're going to do because we're going to boil it. Now if you were worried about salt, salt content, what you would do is you would just fill your bowl up with water, leave your meat in there for about six hours, take it out pat it dry, carry on. And that will dilute any salts that's on the outside, on the outside. So that is that ham, which we are turning into boiled ham. And that is going on there. Now what you do, you stick it on a rack and stick it back in the fridge overnight. Or you could do it for about six hours and then we can cook it. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna air dry a bit more. Toughen up a little bit before we cook it. So as you can see, I've got a bit of a tray here underneath and that's gonna sit on there. Now there shouldn't be any moisture come out of there. There might be a little bit, and if it does, it drains into that tray. The idea of it being on the tray is that we can get some cool air underneath it when it's in the fridge and then it should dry out and we're ready to cook. Now, I've already decided that I'm gonna roast this one. I'm gonna boil these two. Different style of hams. This is gonna be a nice sandwich ham. This will be with fat in and everything. And this one's gonna be roasted and we'll probably make a glaze to go over this. So we're gonna do it two ways. There you are. Let's get that in the fridge. Okay. Here's our hams. Now what we're going to do, we're going to put two of those in this pan. Right, that is going to roast, these are going to boil. Now what we are going to do, I'm using the old Thermo Pro uh, thermometer. I set for 71 degrees and I'm going to stick that in there, nicely in there all the way in. If you don't have a thermometer, don't worry about it. You know, it's about, it takes about 40, 45 minutes to actually boil a ham in here, per kilo that is. So we've got a couple of kilos, so we're gonna probably do for about 50 minutes. However, we're going to use a thermometer in my case, um, because I just want to crack on with a glaze and walk away from this and leave it to cook. Now these thermometers, I'll leave a link everywhere. They're fantastic, I use them all the time. Now, that's in there. The only thing is with this thermometer, which I will point out, it comes with a couple of probes actually. But what I will point out, that this stainless steel braided wire gets extremely hot. So you do not touch it once you start cooking, only with a cloth. Okay, we need to fill this up with water and we're gonna get it on the flame. Now, I'm gonna put it on the flame behind me and I'll probably try and move the camera so you can see it. We bring it to a boil, turn it down and simmer. Not a rolling boil. It simmers for about 45, 50 minutes. And the reason for simmering it, it doesn't toughen the meat. 
So that's it. So let's get some water in here. So you can see on here, look, I've set the internal temperature for 71 degrees, okay? And it's at seven degrees at the moment in that pot. So as soon as that reaches 71, it will trigger that um, probe there, which will set off an alarm here to tell me that's at 71 degrees. That is how fantastic this is. And now it has a range of about 500 meters. So you go in the garden, leave your pan on, and you know when your meat's cooked. Okay, we're gonna put that to one side. Because we're here, we don't have to put it anywhere. Now you could do it the other way. You know, I use all these thermal prof um, thermometers, they're fantastic. The other way is to just take it out, stick it in your meat, and check the temperature. Simple as that. Okay, we're gonna leave that piece of meat there for a minute. We're gonna make a glaze. Got to get the glaze made before we can actually stick that in for roasting. Okay, this is going to be a straightforward glaze. It's an easy glaze. Now, you tailor the flavour to yourself. You know, if you don't like too much cinnamon or cloves, don't put it in or put less in. Okay, so what we need to do is we want about half a cup of brown sugar. We want about a quarter of a cup of honey. In there. Quarter of a cup Dijon mustard. About that much. About a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. Now you can go up to a teaspoon if you want. But I'm going to do about half a teaspoon of cinnamon. And I'm going to do a quarter teaspoon of ground cloves. And then we can't forget, we want some Irish. You put anything in, you can put bourbon in, anything like that. We're going in here with a couple of tablespoons of the old Irish whiskey. Of course, you don't have to use any whiskey whatsoever. Give it a mix in. Okay, heat on. Not too high, and we just want to gently melt all those sugars and all those flavors together. Now this is a really bog standard simple glaze for ham. If you don't like the flavors of uh, cinnamon or cloves, either take it out or knock it down. If you like any other flavours, any other sweet type flavour, add it. Now we don't want this too thick because it has to be brushed on our ham. If you take it too thick, I'm afraid you can't brush it on. So as you can see in this pan, it started to come to a rolling boil. Now this is where we turn it down for a simmer. Back to the glaze. Now you can see if all the sugars are dissolved in there. Okay, that's our sugars dissolved in there. That's our flame off. And we'll let this cool down and then we'll put it into something so we can actually baste on our hams. So that is a quick, simple glaze made. Okay, while this ham is simmering in there, nice and gently, we're going to roast this one in the oven. So I'll just quickly preheat this oven to about 160. Now all we're going to do is put that ham in there. Now we do have a little bit of fat on here that we left on, so let's do the old diamond cut into the top of the meat. Now this is completely optional, you don't have to do this. Now I'm trying to be gentle actually because this knife will go straight through this pork. 
and that's what we're not trying to achieve <laughs> we don't want cubes of pork cooking that's good enough what we're going to do is roast this ham in there now that is going on low and slow we want the temperature to 160 and we're going to do it for about 45 minutes okay that's it leave it leave that leave that job done and then what we'll do about 15 minutes before the end we'll start glazing it with our glaze and put a crust on there probably what we do as well when we boil this and it's cooled down a little bit we'll take that out of there and we'll probably put a little bit of glaze on and stick it in there and glaze over the top but it'll still be boiled ham but with a crispy crusty glaze over the top perfect okay we've had about 20 20 minutes in the oven this is still going away this is up to 49 degrees this we need to take out and put some glaze on now that is looking tremendous just look at that ham right this is our glaze i can't find my glaze brush to be honest so you can see how thick this stuff is okay and what we're going to do is just drizzle a little bit over them we're just going to rub it on with a spoon because obviously this ham's hot and this glaze is quite sticky but runny now what i have done i've transferred some into this bowl because i do not want to contaminate the stuff in the pan so we're just going to rub that on there with a spoon nice and easy i'm going to shove this back in the oven let's get that back in that oven quick smart so it will carry on cooking okay we're going to do the same again look at that same again over there with some of our glaze back in the oven there we are look 71 degrees on there and we've still got one minute on here you couldn't have timed that any better that's unbelievable <laughs> right all we need to do with this one is turn off you turn off you let it stand for 15 minutes there you go there we have it let's get that out of there oh you're kidding me oh look at that that is phenomenal that is superb all we got to do now is let that cool down and then we can cut a slice what we're going to do 15 minutes we'll take that out we'll leave one as boiled ham and then we'll put some rest of this glaze that we have here on that ham and we'll shove it in there and we'll just cook over the top take it out so this is fully roasted we'll have a fully boiled roasted top and a boiled ham what more could you want take that out Oof. so that is our boiled ham our boiled loin let's put that on there this is what we're going to keep as boiled ham this we're going to stick in the oven okay so we're going to take our boiled ham I'm going to bob that in there and what we're going to do is we're going to put that glaze over there so this will be boiled ham with a finished top so we'll get that on that is going in the oven 200 degrees for about six minutes seven minutes just to crisp over the top of that and put that glaze on there okay oh fabulous there we have it three lots of ham boiled ham boiled ham with a glaze baked ham what we're going to do now is let them all cool down and then we're going to cut a few slices. They are ham done two ways. 
Okay, the moment of truth, we're going to cut into them all and see what they are like. Now, don't forget, we've got two boiled hams, but one's been glazed over the top, which is that one. This is the boiled ham, and that's the roast ham. So we'll start with the boiled ham. Let's put that on there. So we just cut straight through it, like that. Oh, just look at that. You can see how perfect this pork is. Look at that. That is superb. So let's just cut a slice of that. Oh, come on. Look at that. That is superb. Perfectly cured, perfectly cooked. That is beautiful. So that is boiled ham. Okay, I'm just going to put that to one side and we'll cut into another one. Okay, this is our boiled ham glazed. So what we'll do is we'll just level off the end and we'll cut through from the end. Now it's a different colour, but it's exactly the same. This is because it's been roasted afterwards. So let's just cut in there. Oh, come on. Just look at that. That is phenomenal. Look at that. That really is delicious ham. Look at that. Super duper. Right, let's cut into the roast ham. This was brined and roasted. It wasn't boiled. So we'll just whip that end off. Look at that. That is one heck of a nice piece of ham. Oh my word. Look at that. That is phenomenal. And come on. This is going to be my favourite. This is the one to taste. That is amazing. Oh. Oh man. Covered in glaze. That is delicious. Oh heck. Mm -mm -mm. That is way better than store bought. That is absolutely superb. So what we'll do is we'll lay them all out. Show you what they all look like. And you make a decision which way you actually want to physically do it. Do you want to boil it, boil it and glaze it, or do you want to roast it? It's all done the same, 48 hour, 48 hour brine, and then cooked. Simple as that. Let's lay them all out and show you what they look like. Oh yeah, that looks superb. I mean, look at this, it looks like a delicatessen. Oh, there you go. Just what do you think of that then? We've got the roast ham. We've got the boiled ham that's been glazed over the top and roasted. It was only roasted for a short time. And we've got the complete boiled ham there. Just look at that. That is superb quality. 48 hours. Easy to do. Anybody can do it at home, actually. And, you know, don't forget those syringes. This is syringed meat and brined. It's so easy to do. Perfect ham. Saves a fortune from the shop. You know, in, especially where we are here, you get three slices of ham for about £1.40. It's ridiculous. You can get a stack of ham, you know, a stack of ham and really good quality and fantastic flavour. There you go. I hope you like what we're doing. Don't forget, smash that like and subscribe, share with your friends, all that kind of stuff. And let's hope you make your own ham.